What's up everybody, Seismic PE Prep example number four. Let's dive right into it. An office building with an ordinary steel concentric braced frame, vertical lateral system, Woo, that's a mouthful. Uh, will be designed in San Francisco, California, USA, where the seismic design category is D. Based on the ACE7 slash SEI7 requirements, the maximum allowable height for this building is most nearly what? We're gonna find ourselves, surprise, surprise, in chapter 12, which is the seismic design requirements for building structures. You have chapter 11, which it gets more into uh, criteria for your actual like response spectrums and stuff like that. 12 is your buildings. 13 is your um, seismic design of components. Uh, and then 15 is non-building structures. 14, I forget, just off the top of my head. But chapter 12 is our domain today, specifically table 12.2-1. Let's head over there. That table looks a little something like this. I think all of you as you know EITs or studying in school, if you've dabbled in seismic design, have seen this table before for one reason or another. It's an extremely important table and it has a ton of uh, essential criteria for you to design your building structure. And let's pause here because yes, I know some of you savvy out there can answer this question lickety split like, and you can move on to the next one, but I wanna talk through more broadly on it. Why are we doing the things that we're doing? What should we be thinking about when we see a problem like this? Well, maximum allowable height of the structure is going to be based on limitations of the vertical lateral system that you're choosing to use to resist your seismic forces. The vertical lateral system was provided to us. That was the ordinary steel concentric brace frame. So since your height uh, limits of your building are based on the seismic force resisting system of choice, then you're gonna head to this table where depending on your seismic force resisting system, it gives you a bunch of design criteria. Put two and two together, that's how you're gonna solve this problem. We're steel, we're ordinary, which is actually quite interesting because we're in a seismic design category D. So right at the top of my head, as someone with experience, ordinary doesn't usually jive with a high seismic region. So that seems a little funny to me. So I think realistically that we are gonna be limited in some way with how big of a building or how more specifically tall of a building we can design. Uh, steel ordinary concentric braced frames. Concentric, not eccentric. Eccentric is a whole different system. So we find ourselves uh, uh, section B three. And we're gonna head over here and we're gonna dissect this table just a little bit here. Uh, right here, you have your detailing requirements based on the system that you have. So you'll pay attention to that if you were to move forward and start doing the detailing. And then you have your uh, coefficients for your systems. The three biggies that we all know we all love, response modification coefficient R, over strength factor, omega sub naught, and your deflection amplification factor, C sub D. We don't need these today. We need to head over to this other part of the table. Something that again, I think that when I was younger, I just grabbed these values and moved on and never really paid too much attention to this other half of the table over here. Well, structural system limitations, including structural height H sub N limits. And this is based on the seismic design category that you're designing in, in conjunction with the vertical lateral system that you're using in your building. That's gonna land us right here. And then if we go all the way straight down, bada boom, bada bing. So we are limited to a structural height of 35 feet. Oh, problem's done, moving on to the next one. Bang, we're under six minutes and we're rocking and rolling. Not so fast. There are critical bits of information in the keynotes of, or footnotes if you wanna call them that, to this table and there's a shit ton of them. You see E right here, you see uh, D over here, you see C right here, you see B, A, you see a J right there. They're all over the place. You see all these G's and H's over here. They're sprinkled all over the place and you're gonna need to make sure that you're checking each one of those because it might give you uh, more strict criteria that you need to follow, but sometimes it throws you a bone and gives you actually better parameters that you can follow. So it's important to check all of them. I've made a mess here. So as I mentioned, today we have E, we have D, we have J, anything else? Steel Ordinary, nothing next to that. Looks like just those three that we need to uh, check on and make sure it doesn't chain our, change our final answer of 35 feet. Where are these subnotes? They're at the end of the table, of course. That's how all of the tables work in, I think, just about every provision that we have in engineering. D, 
just talks about the nomenclature and what it actually stands for. Uh, so NL means not limited, and then NP is not permitted. Uh, for metric units, use 30.5 meters for 100 feet and blah, blah, blah. Okay, the rest of that doesn't pertain to us. So what they're getting at is over here, when there's not an actual numerical value given. So no limit means, hey, they're not limiting you in anything. You can build as tall as you want. Uh, NP means not permitted, means you can't build 10 feet off the ground. You just can't do it. You're not permitted. E, C-section 12254 for a description of seismic force resisting systems limited to buildings with a structural height H sub N of 240 feet or less. All right, we'll go take a look over there just to make sure. And then J, steel ordinary concentric braced frames. Oh, that's us. That's us, people. Focus. Are permitted in single story buildings up to a structural height, H sub N, of 60 feet, where the dead load of the roof does not exceed 20 PSF, and in penthouse structures. All right. Interesting. So are we 35 feet or are we 60 feet? Let's keep that in mind. Let's head out and check on section 12254, and then we'll compile all the info that we have back at our final, or back at the whiteboard to get our final answer. Increased structural height limit for steel eccentrically braced frames, steel special concentrically braced frames, uh, steel buckle restrained braced frames, steel special plate shear walls, and special reinforced concrete shear walls. Uh, none of those vertical systems are us today. You're like, wait a minute, I thought the second one, concentric brace frames. Keyword here, special, special concentric. We are ordinary. So we don't get this extra bit of, you know, leeway with an ordinary system because it's a less ductile system. It's not as uh, highly detailed as a special system. So it performs less well in seismic application. But if you were to do a special system where they beef up all of the design requirements, the detailing requirements, uh, all that kind of stuff, uh, you get a more ductile system, which means they permit you to build taller with a system like that. We don't have, our system doesn't fall in here today, so we don't get to utilize whatever the extra info is in this section. So we're done here. Let's head back to the whiteboard. All said and done, we have two possible answers, 35 foot limit or a 60 foot limit. In our answers today, there's only the 35 presented. So you might say, well, I'm gonna use that and move forward if you were met with this kind of conundrum in the exam. That's what I would suggest you do. However, um, is there anything in the problem statement that, that talked about how many stories this office space was going to be? It does not. It just says office building. So I don't love this problem. I would realistically say, all right, well, because there's that clause that can change your answer, you should tell the test taker, hey, this is two stories. Hey, this is six stories. I don't know. Some amount of stories that distinguishes it so that you can deduce uh, which, which option you need to use here. And again, they didn't give us any type of criteria that, that tells us one way or another if we do have a structure that we're designing that's like that. So. For today, while it annoys me, we are not going to say 60 feet. Instead, we're going to end up and say that we are limited to an office building height of 35 feet in a seismic design category D area with concentric, uh, with ordinary concentric brace frame system. But hey, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing and interacting in any way. This is Rich with Team Kestova. Peace.